HNS is very different from DKA in both its onset, its treatment, and kind of what's actually occurring here. So it's important to understand that these are two very different conditions, um, but they're both associated in both complications of diabetes. Okay, and what's really great about HHNS is it actually tells us everything that's going on. Hyperglycemic, hyperosmolar, non-ketonic state. Okay, so this is very severe um, hyperglycemia with hyperosmolarity without ketosis or acidosis. This is most often going to occur in type 2 diabetics. So generally these are going to be patients that know they're diabetic um, and what can happen is is they can actually go into this HHNS state um, as blood sugars begin to rise. Okay. So remember with type 2 diabetics what's going on here is our, our body becomes resistant to the insulin that's being produced. So we're still producing insulin okay but what happens is we end up with more glucose in the blood and our body becomes resistant to the insulin that is being produced okay so we're not getting that insulin into the cell okay or that we're not getting that glucose into the cell so all the glucose is remaining in our blood here okay now remember that so as we talk about that let's talk about what's actually happening here but a very quick important thing to so so a very quick thing to keep in mind here is we have a little bit of insulin, right? And so we have a little bit of this blood of this sugar, this glucose passing into the cell. So that little bit of of glucose that's passing into the cell helps to prevent the body from becoming um, acidotic. Okay from breaking down those ketone bodies and, and those fatty acids and becoming acidotic. But let's kind of set that aside um, and let's talk about what the complications are and the implications are associated with this, okay? So with, with type two diabetes and with diabetes in general, what happens is we have insulin deficiency, okay? So as our body becomes resistant to that insulin, or as we don't have enough insulin being produced. So as our body becomes resistant to that insulin, we aren't getting that glucose into the cell, okay? And so because of that, our blood sugars are going to rise, okay? Which means we're having more glucose in our bloodstream, okay? So all this glucose starts to build up in our bloodstream. Now that means a couple things. First of all, it means we're not getting that glucose that we need into the cell to produce energy. So our patient's going to start feeling fatigue. Okay? They're not getting all that uh, glucose that they need into there. Okay? So because they're not getting the energy that they need, they're feeling fatigued, they're feeling hungry, they're feeling tired, right? Okay? So as HHNS progresses, we get more and more and more of this glucose building up in the bloodstream, okay? Now as that glucose begins to build up further and further in the bloodstream, okay, here's all of our cells here, the osmotic pressure begins to grow. Remember, osmosis is, or remember fluids like to go from an area of low concentration to an area of higher concentration of solute okay so our cells have all this water okay and our our bloodstream our vessels begin to become very highly concentrated with this solute which is glucose so because of that it starts to pull water out of the cells okay water starts to be pulled out of the cells okay so what that leads to is that leads to dehydration. Okay, and as this blood passes and continues to flow, it eventually gets to the kidneys, right? And as the blood passes into the kidneys, it happens with HHNS that there's so much glucose um, in this blood that the body is not able to, or the kidneys are not able to, able to filter it. So where normally the kidneys would draw that glucose out, get it back into the bloodstream, 
and filter it. Because in HHNS we have so much glucose in the bloodstream, the kidneys are not able to filter it and all that glucose ends up being lost in the urine. Now remember the water is going to follow all that glucose so we end up losing a tremendous amount of water as well. Okay, So that's what's going on with HHNS. It, it all comes down to we have decreased ability to use this insulin and so our blood sugar rise to a level so high that we're pooling all the water out of our cells and at the glucose is so much and so high that the kidneys are not able to filter it and it ends up going out into the urine and we lose that all that water with it and become very dehydrated okay so like I said it's a gradual onset it can generally be initiated by stress dehydration or infection we're gonna notice an altered level of consciousness and dry mucous membranes due to this dehydration our blood sugars are going to be very high, um, as high as 600 or more. You can see it up to up to even 1,200 is the highest blood sugar that I've seen. And then you're also going to see negative ketones. Remember, we have just enough um, insulin available to get some of that glucose in there. Okay, you're going to see an elevated B unit creatinine, and this is due to that osmotic dehydration. Remember, all the water and the glucose is going out in the urine okay so that's all being packaged together that glucose is going out the kidneys aren't able to filter it so the water is following along with it okay so that's what's going to happen with this patient okay so that's really what's going on we have this hyperglycemic state that goes so high we get so much sugar in our blood that it begins to cause all these symptoms okay so what are we going to do First, we want to determine the cause. Is it an infection? Is it stress? What is it? And can we reverse any of that? We want to replace fluids. Replacing the fluid can help with the dehydration. It can also help with the hyperglycemia. As we begin to dilute that blood a little bit, we can begin to help lower um, the blood sugar. Okay. Then we're also going to place the patient on um, intensive insulin therapy. We're going to be checking their blood sugars every hour. We're going to be putting on an intensive protocol, and we're going to be running fluids. We're going to monitor the neurological status, um, and we're going to treat electrolyte imbalances. So with this patient, which is different than DKA, where we're trying to correct the acidosis, with this patient, we're directly trying to affect their blood sugar. We're trying to um, bring that blood sugar down safely and slowly um, as we kind of try to shift that, um, get that glucose into the cell, get the water and the volume, the vascular volume and the cellular volume replaced. Um, this patient is going to start to recover. Okay, so that's kind of how we're going to treat these HHNS patients, and that's how it's really kind of different from um, DKA. So I want you to kind of draw that the DKA diagram and then kind of draw this diagram, and you'll be able to see how different the two really are. All right, if you have any questions,